Hello, my name is Yuri and I unboxed SaneSmart's Genmitsu Prover 3018. Let's build it. The kit comes with a really good manual based on Tacky DIY's detailed build video and with an SD card that contains SaneSmart's own perfectly fine build video. And then there is also the digital manual where you can zoom in. There is no actual need for another complete build video, but by now I built this thing twice and I found some steps that could use more details and there's also a more efficient order to build it. Before you start though, get comfortable and read that manual. Besides a slight change in the order, I spent extra time in this video on the following topics. Making sure the bed is parallel with the bottom frame. Attaching the gantry. Checking and adjusting if the limit switch is working and testing if your cable management is not in the way of any moving parts. On with the build! It's an easy start. Grab a snack and the manual, find two bolts and the allen key and attach the lead screw nut holder to the bed. Whoa, stop! Actually, my bed was a bit misaligned. Don't fix the lead screw just yet. The bearing holders might have become loose during travel or um, <coughs> when you were a bit enthusiastic while unpacking. If you were more careful than I was, then it's easy to test if the bed slides well. And it's also the perfect moment to lubricate some parts. If your bed was also a bit rotated, then realign it first by loosening the four bearing holders and gently align the bed. Then tighten the bolts just a little bit and test if the bed runs smoothly. If you do this with the lead screw attached, it's a bit more work. After this, it is time to attach the limit switches and the small black clips for the cable management. The kit also comes with four rubber feet that you can screw in the corners of the bottom. Unlike the order in the manual, I suggest you connect the cables to the two limit switches before mounting the gantry. Because the bed is still upside down, it is way easier to reach with your fingers. Simply push the blue cover in on one end and while keeping pressure, slide to the other side. Flip the bed and you can sleeve the cables. If your kit came with the spiral sleeve, you can wrap both cables at the same time. When the cables split up again, simply continue wrapping one of the cables. Use two tie wraps to secure the cables to the frame. Congratulations, you finished your bed assembly. Um, I mean, you did a good assembly of the bed. Now it's time for the part that they call the gantry. It will get two limit switches, one for if it moves too far to the left and one if it moves too far to the right. So the electronics now, all right, stop here. And it won't ruin the motors or whatever of the construction. The switches are also there for the homing function, meaning the machine can move all the way to the left and then it knows because the switch clicks like all right this is 0.0.0 .0. and from there on it always will theoretically anyway will always have the same uh, accuracy and the same spot on the board So, they've already assembled the whole spindle holder, including the switches, 
which is good because it's a bit of an inconvenient spot. However, when I tested the machine, this limit switch was never activated. What you heard is a stepper motor unable to rotate. To fix this, I will add some washes between the switch and the blue plastic. That brings it down by 1.2 millimeters. I only found out this problem after finishing the entire assembly. You could also test if the switch gets activated before you mount again. Test it by manually rotating the lead screw. The switch will then give a very audible click when it reaches its end. Assuming my model simply had an incidental fault, you could also test it later. And use a shorter screwdriver if necessary. I've reached the point that I'm gonna prepare to mount this part on here. And they've actually have a quite a nifty tool. It's a little bit of plastic. This part is used for spacing the nuts on either side of the bottom assembly. This way, the nuts are perfectly aligned with the holes in the gantry. The plastic is also used as a spacer to keep the gantry at the correct height before placing the bolts. Take a good look from the side to see if the holes actually align. I've learned that it's better to put in the bolts by hand on either side before you tighten them with an allen key. Any small misalignment will automatically adjust itself. You do not see me use any Loctite because I read different experiences on the Jamitsu Facebook group. And because I'm still learning, I want to experience the need for this for myself. Besides, it takes only 15 minutes to do it afterwards. We reached another nice moment to derail from the manual again. Instead of the controller, place the X-axis limit switch cables first. You might have guessed it, but it makes it easier to push that cover in. The controller itself is mounted using T-nuts. You put the T-nuts on horizontal and simply hold the controller against the frame. T-nuts will rotate 19 degrees when you tighten the bolt. Just be gentle with tightening, the plastic breaks easily. I did the sleeving process a few times because of small adjustments. I suggest you do the sleeving after you tested the machine using a computer or offline remote. Beyond that, the cables and connections are well labeled and I'm confident anyone can do this. I saw in other building videos that SaneSmart used different kinds of sleevings in the past. The spiral ones makes it possible to combine multiple cables and let them split up later. Here with the motor is where I made the cables too tight the first time. If you combine the motor and switch cables, I suggest you bring the spindle in the most down left position before sleeping.
And here we are, at least so I thought the finished machine. And then I found the side panels. Somewhere in between filming the building of this machine, I, I forgot them. They were safely in a box so they wouldn't be scratched. Um, luckily, they're not so difficult to do. They have the same wing nuts, so you just pop them in, give them a few turns, with the Allen key and you're done. It wasn't the only thing I've got. There were the clamps as well. And um, I wasn't completely happy with the wing nuts on top. So I did a little thing to make that different as well. So all in all, I'm still not using the CNC machine. I will soon. Now the machine is finally completely built. This took me hours to do, but the manual might say assembled in 15 minutes. Well, I couldn't even do that the second time. Uh, I think assembling in 15 minutes means you put the panels on, you put the top frame on the bottom frame, and, and then all the electronics is not part of the assembly. Otherwise, I don't know how you could do it in 15 minutes. That said, um, I could do it in two hours. Two to three hours the first time. If for me, most of my problems came from actually putting the lights in the camera there, having the microphone rightly positioned. You go upstairs to check the video, you go downstairs to do it again. <laughs> Well, it's safe to say I got a huge respect for all those builders who make a, a weekly or bi-weekly video about something they've built. Um, there's a lot of, it's a, you know, it's a learning curve to do this. Anyway, Saint Samart sent me a lot of their milling bits, um, basically all of them. Um, so I'm gonna test it out. I got my scrap materials that I'm gonna, these are the materials, it's, it's a hardboard, a floorboard, um, some plywood, but it's a cheap one uh, that I'm gonna use as a bottom. But this is all the next video. I'm happy I built it. Oh, I see one more thing. Well, with that I say this video is done. Thank you for watching and keep an eye out for the next video.